In this video, I'll be performing a direct nonlinear transient analysis. We'll be looking at the stress wave propagation along 1D elements. I'll first start by creating a new patch on session. My new file will be called problem 21. And the units for this example are meters, newtons, and kilograms. I'll click OK here. First define my curve using the XYZ method. My curve is 100 meters long in the X direction. I'll then go ahead and define my materials here by clicking isotropic, calling the material mat under input properties. I'll give it a Young's modulus of 1000, a Poisson ratio of 0.3, a density of 0.1, and a structural damping coefficient of 0.005. Click OK and hit Apply. That was our linear constitutive model. I need to define an elastoplastic one. Here I select hardening slope for nonlinear data input. My slope here is 100. My yield point is 10,000. Click OK and hit Apply. And now you'll see I have two constitutive models. I'll go ahead and apply the material to this curve, and I do this by going to 1D Properties and clicking Rod. I'll call this property Prop. Under Input Properties, I'll select the material I just created. My area is 1 meter squared. For my application region, I'll select this curve. Notice it's here, and I'll hit Apply. Now I can move on to define my boundary conditions. The first thing I need to do is create a time-dependent load case. So here, click load cases. I'll call my new one time-dependent, or time load case. I'll make it current, so then anything after this will be added to this load case, or any boundary condition will be added to this load case. My type is time-dependent, and hit apply. Next, I want to define a field, a non-spatial one. Here, I'll call the load history. My points will be time dependent, so I'll leave this checked. Under input data, if we look at the example here, our load history is basically one or 1,000 throughout the whole thing. I just need one value for this cell. Type in zero, type in six, here, type in 1, or actually hit this one cell, type in 1, type in 1 again, hit enter. Hit OK. Click Apply at the bottom. If it's not there, put your cursor in here and hit Apply. Now I can go ahead and define my boundary conditions. First, I'll go ahead and define my uh, instantaneous load here. So here under nodal force, your new set name, force or F, we'll use the load history we just created. We'll apply 1000 going in the leftward direction, so that's why the negative is there. Click OK under application region. Pick this point, add it, OK, and apply. So now here's our instantaneous force. Now we have to apply our displacement constraints. So let's first define one for the root. So here, type in root for input data. We'll type in one for now, or zero, sorry. So this will prevent translation in the extraction just at this point. So from my application region, we'll select this point, add it, OK, and apply. For my next constraint, I'll call it all other constraint. For my input data, this curve will be restrained in the two, the three, the four, the five, and the six directions. Click OK, select this application region. So curve one, OK, and apply. 
Now I can go ahead and move on to the meshing tab. Here I wish to mesh the curve. My curve list will be this curve. Uncheck automatic calculation. My global edge length will be five meters. So then every element will be five. And at the end when I mesh this, I'll have 20 elements along the length here. To view the numbers of the elements, you can go to the home tab, click label control and turn on the numbers. So one through 20. That's done. I can go to the analysis tab and analyze the entire model. I have to change the solution type to nonlinear transient. Under solution parameters, I'll turn off large displacements and for my W4 damping factor, I'll give it a value of 1.57. Hit enter or click OK at the bottom. Click OK here. For my subcases, we have to modify the time dependent subcase. You'll notice that this subcase makes use of this load case. Alternatively, what I could do is uh, use the empty load case. Here in, in this scenario, we have two load cases. Usually, uh, each subcase corresponds to its native load case, but you can mix and match the two. But here, I just want to use the time load case that has the constraints and the force. Under subcase parameters, my ending time is 2.5 seconds. Here, I'll click automatic, I'll click OK, I'll click apply, I'll click cancel. Under subcase select, by default, it will run the default subcase with the default load case, but there's nothing in there, so we don't want to run this subcase. We want to select the time load case. That includes the load case with all the boundary conditions. So when we select OK and apply, it will analyze that low case. Once that's done, I'll click XDB to import my results and hit apply. Now when I go to results, the first thing I'll check is I'll create a graph. Make sure this is selected. Hit this icon. Highlight all of these values. I want to view my displacements in the extra action and I only want to view that for this node, node 21. When I hit apply, here's my load or my response. When I compare this, this is actually what we do get. So let me zoom in actually. Now to make the numbers a little bit easier to read, I'll go to display attributes and here I'll make the values uh, fixed and hit apply. Now it's easier to read the values. So here the highest response is about um, halfway between 1.8 and 2.3 seconds. And the next thing they want us to view are the nonlinear stresses at the fixed end for the element one. So here what I would do is go back to target entities, select this as elements, select this element here, element one. Make sure you have all these values highlighted. Move. And one thing I just realized I forgot to do is add element stresses to my output results. So I'll have to do this again. Under analysis, click entire model. Under subcases, we'll modify the time load case. So make sure you have it highlighted here and make sure you have the same load case highlighted here. Under output requests, select element stresses. Simply click OK down here or hit apply here. And you should have displacement, SBC forces, and stress here. Click yes to overwrite the old one. Click cancel and click apply to reanalyze this. Once that's done, let's import the results. And now when I click this icon, select every result here, 
and I scroll to the bottom here and Y result, I have my stress tensor nonlinear stresses available now. I want to view my stresses in the X direction, which is along the elements. And again, I want this just for element one. Let's click apply. Let's uh, shrink this because it's always behind it. And here you can see the response and it matches this response here, even the value is the same. Let's do this for element 20, which is at the free end. So select element 20. If you want, you could type in element 20 here. Click apply. You'll notice that is exactly the same response we have here. Now, sometimes uh, it's sort of difficult to sort of hide or delete this uh, window, so I'll tell you how to do that. Under action, click delete and select object plots and select this uh, one plot. Or if you go to home in the model tree, I believe there's a check mark here that lets you turn it off and on. Alternatively, you can just delete the entire plot. It's up to you. Save, and that concludes this example.